Hello, this is Emmanuel Alea, CEO and founder of Alea Systems. And in my episode for Business Growth Architect Show, I'll share how to do content marketing in this new day and age where paid ads are difficult, iOS 14, iOS 14.5, making these difficult, but we're using short form content like TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and Instagram Reels to scale our businesses rapidly. Hello, fabulous person, Beata Shalet here, the Growth Architect. Welcome back to the Business Growth Architect Show where we bring you cutting edge business strategies from some of the world's most successful entrepreneurs, business transformation experts and visionaries who want to help you to scale your impact. Look for one tangible strategy that you can take back and implement right away. And now back to our guest. Hello and welcome. This is Beata Chalet, the growth architect and your host of the Business Growth Architect Show today. You are in for another treat, another one of my secret weapons. Emmanuel Elier is on the call with me. Emmanuel, thank you so much for being here. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So for somebody who is not familiar with you and LEA Systems, will you tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do? Sure. I'm Emmanuel Lea. I run uh, Alea Systems. I'm CEO and founder of that company where we build systems that build brands online and help e-commerce entrepreneurs go from 10K a month to 100K a month to a million dollars a month without wasting a fortune on ad spend or working themselves half to death to do it. So we learned these skills over several years. We built several of our own e-commerce brands, uh, one in which we've done about $50 million or so. And in the last three years, we've worked with about 100 different brands, helped them make an extra $20 million in incremental revenue, and so we've kind of proven out our model, and that's why we named the business Alea Systems. I obviously I love that, and I am very proud to say that I was part of the creation of the initial concept of of the Alea System. And I remember you and I having a conversation about when we talked about what should we call it. I said it was somewhere with a name this extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be in the name. So I'm so proud to hear that you are doing so well and are able to serve so many people. Um, my question to you is now around strategy. So you started this business. What? How does strategy play into how you build the business and how you service your clients. Yeah. So when I think about strategy for my business itself, uh, it's one of those, you know, the, the cobbler son has no shoes ideas. It's always like doing our own marketing, doing our own strategy, doing our own planning, always kind of falls to the bottom of the priority list. Uh, but I will tell you, having a mastermind, having, like you mentioned, the advice that you gave me when we first started is tremendous. That's the first thing, because I have a second set of eyes to help me look at, you know, see further down the road than I can see. Because folks like yourself, you've been there. You've done that, right? I've had other mentors who also spoke into me. So little things like going away from project-based, like when I first started, it was all projects. And my mentor was like, why don't you charge monthly to a monthly service? Like just change it up. So little things like that, all of a sudden my cash flow was predictable. And I can get away from having to hunt for, for my next meal every single month once my last project ended, right? And moving into certain fields based on the demand that is in the marketplace. So even now we're pivoting into more content and creative. When we first started, I was an influencer marketing agency. Influencer marketing completely changed because influencer marketing, the influencer became less influential. So we had to move with the market from that to being an operations agency and being an ops agency, I was selling vitamins instead of painkillers, right? And so people needed it, but they didn't necessarily want ops. So they would take all the savings that we, we would make them on their operations and give it to the marketers who would run ads at a break even ROAS. And I was like, well, if you're going to break even on that, I could do that. You don't need to hire those guys. Just let us try. So we pivoted into that. And then now what we're seeing is we're pivoting into content when it comes to email ads website optimization social media out of home marketing all of it needs creative and content and every single client we have needs it so it's kind of like the market is moving that way especially with ios 14 ios 14.5 it's getting harder and harder to run ads so what we can do is 
we can help them become more prolific on social media. I feel like a lot of people are moving back towards social media, organic SEO, those type of channels. So that's where we're pushing. So in terms of strategy, it's where's the market at? What are the problems that people are trying to solve? And let's position ourselves to be there to provide a solution for them. I like what you said, and I'm going to break this down a little bit further for our listeners. So part of what I've always admired about the work that you do is that you see that there are that the market is always changing. So it's not like a static market. And I think that's really important for everyone to really hear, because especially in the e-commerce or in internet marketing, in really any business right now, what we've learned uh, throughout the pandemic and afterward, and now as we are in this inflation recession environment, is that the flexibility to see market conditions is really critical to react to it. So a personal question, how come this doesn't scare you? Because most people are afraid to make changes and they try to hold on to the Titanic until it sinks. How can you stay fluid with the decision-making in an ever-changing environment, whereas others can't? What is it? Yeah, I think it does help. I, I'm, I used to be in the military, so adapt and overcome was one of the big types of things. And one of the things that was always um, drilled into us is that you know, it's going to be difficult, right? Embrace the suck, right? It was one of the mantras. Like, it's going to suck. It's going to change. It's going to be difficult. That being, and also, once I got into business, I recognized the pace of change is much higher because I was an ops guy also. So military, Amazon, things change slowly. The way you do fulfillment and manufacturing hasn't changed for decades, right? But then getting into the marketing world, it has changed a lot. So I won't say that I don't have feelings around it. So maybe the feeling isn't fear. <laughs> I do have feelings. Okay. It is frustration. It is pain and misery. But to me, that comes with the territory. That comes with the job, right? Because I could still be running around warehouses, right? Uh, doing a job at a fulfillment center, but I get to do marketing all day from my home, right? I get to work a job where all my employees are virtual. All my clients are virtual. And so as I look at it as not as, a something to be afraid of, but as part is part of the job, right? Whereas when I had a job, I could be fired at any time, right? So that's a risk of that job. In this job, iOS 14 could come out and wipe out all the, you know, your ad performance for the last year and completely change how you do things. Or email marketing could stop working and all your stuff's going to spam or, you know, change is built into marketing, you know, and, and it's frustrating. Uh, but it's not something to be afraid of. Otherwise, we may as well just not do this. <laughs> well, I think this is really a critical part. This is why I wanted to uh, go a little bit deeper down that road, because I know that you have had some major challenges and mm -hmm. there were some things where you got yanked into a completely different direction. And yet every time I talk to you, you seem to come out better than before, <laughs> even though, you know, let's just say what it was. It's like an oh shit moment where you mm -hmm. go, I can't believe this is happening to me. So yeah, I like to play like I'm a cockroach, can't be killed. Just can't kill us. <laughs> nope. It's I'm going to quote around. you on that. I like to play like a cockroach. <laughs> I can't be killed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everybody do write business. that down. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Att with attribution to Emmanuel. Hilarious. Mm -hmm. So now going a little bit deeper into strategy. So you said that you are, you work with a lot of e-commerce businesses and now you've made a massive change to content marketing and that being a lot more organic and maybe a lot more aligned with what it used to be intended to because yes. it became a massive manipulation of algorithms. Mm -hmm. And now that, that that carpet has been pulled out uh, underneath our most geeky and most manipulative internet marketers, tell us what's going on in content marketing and what do you do to help your clients with that? Sure, absolutely. And I love this topic because really the people, the people who are going to get left behind in this period going forward are people that are frustrated and scared, as we talked about a second ago, of the fact that it changed so dramatically from the last two to three years. I'd say even the last five years. Well, the way to look at it is not that, hey, how do we get back there? The way to look at it is being there was problematic. That was too easy. 
that was a problem because all these algorithms, how is it possible that an algorithm can take your product image from your Shopify store and find people who are ready to buy it immediately? You know how much information and data they have to have about you from a privacy perspective? They need to know you're in the market. They need to know who you are, what type of stuff you like to buy. Like it's a creepy level of information that just a photograph of a product is enough to make you buy. That's kind of scary. That was just, it was too easy. So what we like to convince our clients is not, hey, let's try and get it to go back. Let's go back to where we were and let's get all these huge return on ad spend numbers and return on investment. And let's go back to the fundamentals. Because at its core, content has been around for decades. That's how we've done marketing since the Mad Men era, right? And before, right? The only thing that has changed is the medium, whether it was radio, billboards, television, uh, digital advertising, or, you know, Google ads. Like, everything needs content and creative. You need to have a message, you need to have positioning, and you need to have a product that solves a high-value problem for a specific audience. You have those things nailed down, then it's just a matter of communicating that information through whatever medium you want. And that is not going away. That is not changing. I feel like because of how good the algorithms got, we were able to kind of not have to do a lot of that positioning, the brand work, the creative strategy, the messaging. We didn't need to do as much of that because you can literally just throw your products catalog onto Facebook and Facebook will send you an army of customers. Well, those days are gone. And we're back to being true business people. And I think it's better for not just us as marketers and business people, but us as people in general that needed to happen. <laughs> you know, because as a marketer, I was frustrated. But as a personal person, I was like, this is great. No more privacy issues. Uh, well, I think that there's a lot in that. Number one, this hacking idea. I think if I hear one more time somebody say they have a hack for something, I think I'm going to vomit, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's like a hack for this, a hack for that. I think what we're seeing right now, and we see this on our end a lot, Emmanuel, is that the human connection, shockingly, is is back in style where people, especially post-COVID, want to have an interaction with other people want to get to know what you're passionate about especially this next generation they want to know that you are not a hack they want to know that you are a real person that's actually genuinely interested in helping them with a particular problem or a service and it's all back about relationships i mean that's yep. what 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 we are seeing here and that, so go ahead please sorry yeah i was just about to say that's a phenomenal um observation you made like the idea of connection people are aching for it they're they're yearning for it and i feel like that's where even us coming in and doing content for people is starting to make a big shift because when we make content a lot of times even when we finally do it we hire the production crew we hire the videographers the photographers and we make content all about me 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 my products my solution my service well that doesn't really connect with people people connect with people and if you're going into a social environment where people are scrolling, right, or they're looking at cat memes and you say product, 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 they're just going to scroll right by. What they need to connect with is you. And so I literally, the job we just finished was with a fulfillment center, right? It seems seemingly like a boring business, right? It's a very, it's a building. That's the product. And the founder was, did not want to be on, on camera. He did not want to be doing TikTok style dances and all that. And what we convinced him of was, look, you wanted to show that you are human beings, you will pick up the phone. How are you gonna show that if you guys aren't on camera? So what we did was we compromised. Instead of it just being him, where he's the focus, him and his employees all got together and we had lunch together, we videotaped that, we had his employees introduce themselves, we took photos of all them, the team, so that everyone now is a communal type of environment and now that can be pushed down. And then there were some people that come to find out they really enjoyed being on camera. So some of the employees would do the TikTok stuff. And then now as a team, you've got this, the dances and the fun vibe. And then he would jump in and be the serious guy. And like we had these skits going. So it's it's not a matter of having to um, change how we do content necessarily. It's a matter of being making it more intentional about what you said, making a connection 
with the audience, right? And we can get over ourselves a little bit and have a little bit of fun. That's why I think this TikTok generation is helping us, us gray haired folks, right? With a little bit of <laughs> wisdom on our chin uh, to uh, explain is that, hey, look, we can be fun. It's okay. You don't have to be general electric like back in the day anymore. Let your hair down a bit. Well, I don't think that that works anymore anyway. I think mm -hmm. that a lot of people kind of really want to know what you're, what you're made out of. And uh, we had, you know, this, this year, a very serious uh, branding conversation with a team where we ourselves had to go in and say, well, as a woman over 50, I can't really pretend like I'm the next hot young thing with the next, the next big idea, because I mean, I'm past that. So how do you now create a brand conversation, you know, in the growth architect to say, well, what do we what do we actually give to people? And this is how the concept of this podcast was born to say, well, if we have the shortcuts, then we cut out the fluff. And that is the brand then is the, you know, intense conversation to say, look, you know, if you want if you want a, a trending, you need to go somewhere else. But if you want the information condense, you come here and we'll give it to you. And then you can amplify your own message and accelerate your progress. So these types of conversations are what we all need to have with our ourselves and our and the brands and clients that we are serving to say, is what you do and how you show up even relevant in today's market? And even if it may be relevant for now, will it be relevant for this next generation that's coming in? Because I sometimes, Emmanuel, sit here and think to myself, some of these like big old companies like, you know, General Electric and IBM, how are they going to be relevant for a Gen Z? And I'm having a really hard time seeing that unless there is a significant shift. Hmm. I, I bet I'm sure there's teams of people in those companies right now, <laughs> literally scrambling to figure that out because I, I don't know either. I, I was just talking to somebody the other day where I think they built their businesses on business right on enterprise they know their customer and i guess what they hope is just you know these gen z folks get assimilated into these big companies and that's where they'll meet them there right because apple already won that that battle with the you know at least our the younger generation the they have the cool factor microsoft does not but what microsoft does have is these massive long contracts <laughs> with these big companies where that's the technology they use and that's the kind of hacky stuff that they use to lock in right it's it's not the best business practices but that's how you get around being a kind of brand that's relevant right instead of being relevant just be a, a brand that locks people in right? it'd be a, a the borg if you will or the uh kind of this authoritarian figure that puts in these big hard gnarly contracts that I, I don't know. That's just not, I think that's a generational thing that has shifted doing business that way, but some brands still epitomize it. So I don't know how they're going to do it, but um, I'm curious to see like you are, like how they do solve that. <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting at the edge of my seat mm -hmm. and uh, I'm here with Emmanuel Elier and we are going to be right back after this message. Thank you so much for listening to the show. This is Beate, the Growth Architect. I'm so excited that you're here. Thank you so much for your time. Have you ever wondered why your business is not growing as quickly as you would like it to be? Well, you may have a business growth blocker. And if you'd like to find out what that business growth blocker is, go and take our brand new quiz at growthblockerquiz.com. And in only a few minutes, you're not just going to find out what that blocker is, but also what to do about it. Again, go to growthblockerquiz.com. And now back to the show. And welcome back. This is Beate in a conversation with Emmanuel about marketing, content marketing, and what is relevant right now as you're building e-commerce business and you want to make more sales. Emmanuel, my next question for you is, What's a favorite strategy of yours that you want to share with our audience? Sure. And this is strategy versus tactic too. So this will be a little bit kind of gnarly to unpack, but but hang out with me here because I promise it'll be good. But okay. I, <laughs> really, 
it's the intersection of two big things, right? The shift away from advertising being too easy, right? And the algorithm's not working as well. However, those social media platforms still require content. That is one thing that they have always wanted is really good content that gets people to stay on the platform. So you, you, you combine that with the second major shift that has come about, which is short form content. This is TikTok, which TikTok has driven away with this. And now IG Reels, YouTube Shorts, Facebook Shorts, they're all trying to catch up to TikTok. If you pair those two things together, you end up with this strategy where for most brands, if they simply started a TikTok and just started posting content once a day, they'll eventually find in 30 days or so, and you can supercharge this by, by uh, posting three times a day, which I tried for a while and it actually worked. You'll find one or two that do really well within that first 30 days. And then just keep doing more of the ones that worked. Now, once you have that content that works really well on TikTok, it's going to work well everywhere else. Punch it on YouTube Shorts, IG Reels, everywhere else. Now, here's the actual secret sauce where the strategy is, because even with that, that's still organic. You're going to be looking at me like, oh, I've only got 100 followers on TikTok. I've only got, you know, I had a couple go 1,000 views, 5,000 views, but that's not much reach. Now, here's the key to it is now you take that same creative and use that as your ads. Because what we've just shortcutted is that time, you know, people are always saying, if you're going to run ads, you got to be willing to burn $10,000 cash to test. You got to be, well, no, you don't have to burn $10,000 cash because now you have creative that you know the platforms, it works on the platforms. So it cuts your cost of creative testing almost to nothing to where your ads start to perform right away from the moment that you launch them. So then that's how you get your scale. Cause now instead of getting a thousand views on a video, you can get a hundred thousand views on a video in a day or two, because now you're running them as ads. And guess what? You know that this is a high performing ad that got you leads. It drove sales, even though they were small, they drove more leads and sales than the other posts did. So it's a higher likelihood that as an ad, it's going to perform very, very well. Okay, so let me make sure I got this right and mm -hmm. I can recap this properly. Sure. So you're saying that this short form content, as we now know, is all the rage, right? So mm -hmm. nobody really knows that. I mean, I certainly struggle with keeping things to 60 seconds. I don't know what that is, but I'll, I'll, I'll learn. So short form content, which was driven by TikTok. Now I'm going to take that and I'm going to detach my... my my myself from the notion that I'm going to have to be TikTok famous immediately, mm -hmm. but I'm using it as a testing platform and I'm going to put up enough content to see which of my content performs better. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say this though. I like watching cat videos mm -hmm. and I like watching cute dogs doing funny things and frogs trying to eat ducks and things like that, because that, you know, is very funny. But that's not going to drive my business. So I need to make sure that my short form content is somewhat related to what I'm trying to sell, right? So should we give I, people like a little bit of a pointer on um, how to stay on target? Because sure. riding your skateboard and drinking cranberry juice is maybe unless you sell that cranberry juice, which cranberry juice, you know, which I, I think the company figured out uh, would be very helpful for them. But that's not going to help you as a person with a product. So how do we how do we make it interesting and stay on target, though? I love it. So that is the exact. I'm glad we're doing this. I hope you don't mind if I debate a Go little ahead, bit. Go ahead, debate. Please <laughs> debate. Put you back a little because I would argue that was where I was before I took this challenge, right? And now I can, I'm not looking back. Like I was going to start a YouTube channel. I was going to do Facebook a little bit more because that's where my audience is, right? The more serious you know, focused entrepreneurs. Well, what I found is, well, there's some metrics on TikTok. The fastest growing segment is people over 35 on TikTok. The, the highest purchasing segment is women over the age of 35 on TikTok, right? Like these are grown folks, right? The, the kids have made it known, but us as grown folks are the ones that are showing up there. So your audience is there. So they're not there though, to look at a YouTube video. 10 minutes long. They're there those to be entertained. So cat memes do work. So just correlate it to your industry. So if cat memes, dog memes, uh, a kid riding on a skateboard, literally what you just described 
can be a video. And I think what changes is the amount of production value that we expect is only that high in our minds. Like you could literally right now, pick up your phone. I could make a TikTok right now on this call if we wanted of just an idea. You take an idea. This is what I was saying. It's like a lot of like shorts and you just post it. And then you see how it does. If it doesn't do well, it doesn't do well. Because the way the algorithm is built, it's not about your friends and your connections. That's the old social media like Facebook, Instagram. It was built on a social graph. So who you know is who sees your content. This is based on content graph, where people who are interested in certain topics are the ones that are going to see it. So if someone's interested in branding, well, that person who the it was, uh, what was it, cranberry juice on a skateboard, I'm sure there's a branding lesson in there that you could literally show the first part of it, stitch it, right? Show that so people can immediately, oh, I remember that guy. And then talk about a branding lesson that's 30 seconds to 60 seconds long. And immediately now you've connected with them up front, gotten them receptive to a message and said, now I'm going to show you how this applies to branding your business. And guess what? By starting with that, now you're calling out the business owners. So the people who are not business owners who just loved that scene will swipe by. And the people who are have self-selected to watch the rest of your video. At the end of that video, call to action, check out my free guide to branding, whatever it may be, bang. Do that over and over again with different cats, different dog memes. That's just one idea. Taking something that's already interesting, tying it to your focused message and just doing that all day long. That's genius. I never even thought about it like that. So now this releases me off my my guilty pleasure of why I like to watch these shorts mm -hmm. because, you know, I, I do... I do like to entertain and I just like to laugh because, you know, it gets pretty, it gets pretty dense. And I think mm -hmm. one of the issues that we have to overcome in our space is the talking head, mm -hmm. because how many talking heads can you, can you see? So if I go to my Instagram feed now and it's like, have you ever swipe? Yeah. Here are three swipe. Mm -hmm do you want swipe right so it's all this clickbait stuff that i think is working less and less and less and less and less and you're saying that if i get away from trying to get my message out but package my message into something that i know i like cat mm -hmm. videos right i think my favorite was yesterday when i was watching that turtle being cleaned with a with a toothbrush <laughs> on the underbelly and having like this just absolute look on bliss on your face. How can I take something like this and then make that relevant for my brand mm -hmm. and say, here's why this works. And so I get the the eyes, the eyeballs on the content. I get my message out, but I'm giving an entertaining value. Is this is this the concept? Am I getting this right? 100%. Absolutely. Excellent. Because what you've just done is you've started playing by the rules of the platform. Literally, yes. you described it so eloquently uh, on Instagram. It's, hey, by the way, hey, did you know three tips for two hacks, simple way to scroll, scroll, scroll. It's obvious people have seen it. They're blind to it. It's just as bad as brands putting super highly polished content, right? That there, there was obviously a studio shoot, right? It's just over the top. We know it's just you know, it's like if you go and get headshots done and then you post that, you know, like people are going to be like, oh, cute, and then move on, right? Like they're not really going to pay attention. But if you hit them where they're at, you described it well, you're on shorts, you're on IG reels, because everything else is so dense. You just want to be entertained, entertain people, because here's what's going to happen is you're going to be swiping, you're going to be laughing, it's hilarious. Then you see another one like yours. That is a cat meme. And then it's going to be, maybe you don't stitch it. Maybe you do a green screen where while it's playing behind you, your face is there so they can see, oh, there's maybe she's going to say something. Maybe you can be like, oh, sh there's a point to this. Get ready. Stay till the end. Right. But you see a cat like I saw one the other day. I watched the whole thing. This cat was laying there with a blanket over it and they were putting cucumbers on his eyes. They gave it a manicure, pedicure. It was very adorable. It was very cute. Uh, you could take something like that in this scenario and talk about how it relates to your industry or to uh, growth architecting, right? And then 
the key is, this is the key where I think a lot of people go wrong is they try to convert people right away. Like, how is this going to lead to sales? It does not. I will tell you right now, it does not lead to sales. What it leads to is awareness. You want to segment people who are watching you from your audience. So ideally, at most, you either want to get them to follow or to download some kind of a lead magnet or something like that. Just self-select out to get them off of that platform because they're in engagement mode. They're in entertainment mode. You don't want them in entertainment mode. You want them in focused, serious mode. That's just a different platform. And that probably is the key there is the difference is stick with the entertainment on the platform. All right. So you absolutely nailed it. Make it funny, make it interesting and make the bar very low. I just want people to follow me and then to subscribe to my platforms. I can sell to them later. I can talk to them about in-depth stuff later. But here, I just want to find people who are entertained by similar things that I'm entertained by, and then hit them with a couple nuggets here and there while of, of teaching while I'm going through in this entertaining environment. It's almost like thinking about it as like if you had a workshop at your offices versus if you went to a dinner party at a comedy club, are you going to be standing there trying to give seven reasons why? Right? Like that's what people do on social media and that's not the way to do it. You tell some jokes, you know, you have a good time, you know, have some drinks, enjoy. That's how you do it on short form content. Yeah. So I guess the audiogram for this video and uh, podcast interview is then going to be that segment where you say, I think of myself as a cockroach that can't be killed. Um, mm -hmm. That that probably will get some attention um, because it is an unusual thing to say and uh, to me, very entertaining and funny. So mm -hmm. this was really uh, amazing from looking at this from the perspective of that even a serious brand like mine, where it's about building businesses, growth architecture, that we can have fun. And if we take things that people are entertained with and repurposing this into, into something that, you know, people just enjoy. But I, I like what you said. It is about the break in the moment because we are so intense 24 seven, and we have to be now so productive at every minute of the day. And everything we've been, you know, been shoved in our throats is like, uh, make sure your calendar is perfectly uh, mapped out every minute of your day is is productive, uh, how to get more done in a shorter amount of time. And I think our brains are about to explode because it's so much cramped in right now that we are gravitating toward these more entertainment based social media channels, because it makes us kind of just have a, a, a moment of lightness. And if we remember that, and then to your point, provide that relief of this intense focus and pressure we are under, then we get the eyeballs and the conversion with a longer term plan. Do you see that it takes longer to convert people to buy? 100% it does. Yes, yeah. but it's worth it because you do a lot less selling. I literally, I'll jump on a sales call now and people will tell me, I've watched everything you have. Just tell me the price. I'm ready to sign up, right? Like they just, they're, they come on sold because I have so much out there already. And then on top of that, no one else in my market, really, the, the way we do things is doing what we're doing. And most of like, we love the idea of boring businesses right now because no one's doing short form content for a fulfillment center for a manufacturing plant, right? And then when they do it, it is the most stodgy, boring, just, it just doesn't fit the platform, you know, <laughs> very well. So you can immediately stand out if you just play by the platform's rules, whether this is IG, right? Imagine going on the IG and not having good looking content, right? Like it's just, it, it just stands out, right? Uh, or having um, on YouTube, having square videos, like it just doesn't fit. You wouldn't do that. You'd have a horizontal video. It fit. Mm -hmm. So that's what you do with short form content. You make it short and interesting. And if you can do it well, there's a, there's a bonus to this too, though, is even though it takes longer to build, you're building an asset. It's the tortoise versus the hare, right? Uh, so this is the tortoise idea. You're taking this a uh, long time, but now you have this asset, like right now, if I wanted to post, I, I mean, I've, I've, I've got about 1500 followers on my TikTok, but I can post something and that's 1500 people that will see it, right? The email list idea, right? In our, our other brand, we have over a half a million customers. It took us eight years to build that. But when we want to launch a product, 
we can launch basically to our own market, to our own audience. That's the benefit of having something like this is you're building yourself an asset. And the key to this is what I like to focus on is not so much how much revenue or how many sales and how, how much uh, exposure I can get with it. It's how low the effort is. If you think about every other marketing activity in our business, whether it's running ads, making videos, making emails, they all require some level of brainstorming, then editing, then revising, then having someone post it, then schedule it, you know, all this effort and work. When it comes to short form video, those bars are low. Like you don't have to do any of that stuff. You don't even have to edit it a lot of times. Just throw your ideas out there, see what sticks, right? And it's so low of a bar, it almost is like, why, why not? And that's actually harder for people is to get over the idea of make this super low production. They don't want it to look so bad quote unquote right but bad is what is good <laughs> on the platform so yeah it's it easier feels, yeah it feels more real i think that's it's that's what authentic. people are looking for they want to they want to see the real the real you not the polished you i i think there's two ways to go with this there's one where it's the exaggerated perfection which we see a lot with the young women and uh, forgive me, the over-injected lips and 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 all that stuff of where mm -hmm. this is just the perpetual chase for perfection. And I think then there is the honesty of saying, look, here's where we are at. This is what it really looks like. Um, this is the behind the scenes. This is what what really goes into it. And I think people, as you said, really like that. Yeah, so and it's <laughs> it, there's such a push for it. There's even platforms now, and TikTok has absorbed one of them where there's four little icons at the bottom of the social media screen. And, you know, one of them is create. So those icons are really important. One of them is this thing they're testing called now, where literally it just, you go in there and you take a picture of your, and it takes a picture of your front camera and back camera to go away from the highly produced, like, it's just real. People are just looking for something that's real. You know, so I agree with what you're saying there. And you know what? That's probably a really good thing. So for somebody who's listened to this and said, my God, I need to know this man. Where can I find out more about you? Where do we send them? What do you have sure. for our audience? Aleasystems.com. That is my website. Uh, we are there. You can submit a contact. If you want to reach out to me directly, that goes straight to my email, not a customer service email, not to anyone else. Obviously, you can email me directly, Emmanuel at Aleasystems.com. That's two M's. Uh, my TikTok. I'm big on TikTok there. I like putting out TikToks there. That's fun for me. And then obviously LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the other place where I'm really active. So LinkedIn, TikTok, and my website. Excellent. So there you have it, everyone. Uh, Emmanuel Elie from Elie Systems here on the call with me today, talking about short form content, about how marketing is changing. And if you want to know more about him, please look him up. Emmanuel, it's been amazing to have you on the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me. And that's it for today. Until next time and goodbye. And that's it for us today. Thank you for listening and watching the Business Growth Architect Show. I enjoyed having you here. And for accountability, just take one of the strategies that you have heard, one thing that you can implement in your business immediately. Please leave comments. Don't forget to like and share this show. And if you have any questions about business, please put them in the comments. We are here for you. We're here to support you and help you to grow, build, and scale your own business. For more advice, please check out our website in the show notes below. Thank you again. This is Beat Chalet, the Growth Architect, and goodbye.